as a continuation of the last class we will work on today to implement certain logics using ALP example to find out the smallest and the largest of signed numbers unsigned numbers how to perform a division and finding it an average because there is no division instruction is available so we have to do successive subtraction and when we're implementing these two programs we learn how to implement a procedures how to invoke a procedure and return from a procedure call <coughs> how to handle the signed numbers and signed numbers little more details we will study today and also we will implement a program where we use a multiplication instruction so at the end of this session today we'll be completely understand the all the arithmetic instruction of arm addition and subtraction we have done already addition with a carry also we have done so today we will do with the multiplication and division and related arithmetic programs now <coughs> in the last class i just told you how to add a set of n 32 bit number using a looping concept so when the number exceeds the 32 bit number we have also told that how to accumulate the carries and keep it another register so answer will be 64 bit number as a continuation of that so now we will find out a program program to perform division of two numbers division of two numbers <coughs> now whenever we perform a division of two numbers you would understand that division requires two two operands that is a dividend and a divisor like mull instruction like you had you had an add instruction was there add was there similarly mull is there similarly sub is there but there is no div is there <coughs> you may ask the question sir why division is not provided i said in the beginning of the description about the advantage of uh, sysc architecture the goal of the sysc architecture is to make the hardware complexity complexity less cost should be less power consumption should be less that is the goal of a sysc architecture so Cisco architecture does not have the facility in the sense complexity cannot afford the complexity to implement a div instruction. Whereas all sys process, including 8051, 886 onwards, Intel process, they provide div instruction. So in Cisco architectures like ARM, they do not provide a div instruction. <clears throat> when they do not provide a div instruction, the option left for me is what? Repetitive subtraction. So I have to do the repetitive subtraction. Let's assume that I have a number. I have a number stored in the memory i have a number stored in the memory so let's say i have a number stored in a memory so <clears throat> some number bcd so let's say nine i have to divide this by let's say three i have to divide by three so it's a decimal anyway i represent as a hexadecimal i want to perform the division what is the logic best possible to perform the division of two numbers First, I will get this number into two registers. So, ADR, first I will set up a pointer to get the numbers. R0 equals num. Then, LDR, R1, I will get the dividend. So, R0. Then, R2, I will get a divisor. So, R0, hash 4. So, now I have got the two numbers. So, what are the two numbers? One is a dividend that is a nine is there in r1 the three will be there in a r2 which is a divisor i have to perform so i have to perform basically so dividend divisor in this case it is basically what r1 by r2 is supposed to do and when i perform this one i get two answers that is a quotient <clears throat> let's say i will store that in r3 register r3 register so i get a reminder i get a reminder uh, reminder so that let's say I'll store in a R4 register or I can store them in the memory also. Now, how do we start dividing? How do we start the division operation? So whenever we perform a division operation, <coughs> it is understood that since there is no divide is there, easiest method to implement the division operation is the multiplication, is a subtraction. So I can do a repeated subtraction of these uh, program one after the other. So when I do repeated subtraction, what I have to take care is I should be able to subtract a first a number and see that after the subtraction, whether the answer is still positive or not, because that is a that is for me 
to stop subtraction. See, subtraction is easier. So you can subtract. We have we have a register R1, R2 is there. You can subtract R1, comma R2. But the question is, how do you stop the subtraction? When do you stop the subtraction? <coughs> so that you can do it. That you can do it only when you are able to identify when I have to subtract, stop the subtraction. So this is possible. This is possible only when you identify whether the answer is positive or not. If the answer is not positive, that means that I have subtracted one extra time. I should stop my program. I should stop my program. So this is my uh, concept here. So what I'll do is now I'll subtract one time. Then I'll check <clears throat> whether the answer is a negative or not. If it's a negative, if it's a positive, I'll continue subtracting it. If it's a uh, <clears throat> negative, I'll stop it. So what I can do is I can use an instruction called branch and equality condition. So there are two conditional opcodes, conditional codes available to check whether the answer or whatever the previous operation has generated a positive or not. So we have seen that it is nothing but what? The PL, the plus and the, the minus. So what I'm doing now here, I'm going to do uh, the subtraction and then I use a PL condition and the I have to use a minus MI condition to find out whether it is properly working or not. So we will see that now, how do you work on it so now i'll <coughs> copy that portion okay oh look at these instructions now <coughs> So what I did now, subtract, I'll do it from what R1 comma R2, that is R1 minus R2, because you should keep on subtracting R2 from R1. So I'm doing it, subtraction of R1 minus R2. As soon as I subtract, <clears throat> if I'm able to subtract one time, that means that my quotient ultimately is what, how many times you are able to subtract continuously. See, if there is, a, if I'm doing a, this is a nine by three, if I subtract one time, you get a six, nine minus three, six. Again, if I'm able to subtract six minus three, three, you'll get it. Again, if I'm able to subtract three minus three, zero. That means that I'm able to subtract three times. So I would like to represent every time you subtract, I'll keep incrementing one register at the end of the program that says that how many times you could able to subtract. So what are the instructions used? <clears throat> Add plus. That means that the previous operation is a plus in the sense it is not negative that is you could able to subtract successfully then i'll increment r3 by one so before that i have to make r3 is equal to zero so <clears throat> i'll make r3 is equal to zero so move r3 equals zero now i'm able to subtract it now as i said what is the terminating condition terminating condition is if the answer is positive keep on do that so i'll branch i'll use a branch so what is an operation i'm going to use conditional code pl so branch if the previous operation that is which is the previous operation Add is not the previous operation because I have not added S here. So S is there only in what? SUBS. You should be very careful in understanding these concepts here. If I put S here, S or no, add S or add PLS, whatever you, you write it. If I use the S here, that means that the branching depends upon the previous operation. Previous operation, I don't want the flags to be affected. That is why I not used S here. Now, if I execute this instruction, what is the previous answer the, for the flags? The previous answer is what? This is the answer. Because the next instruction after the SUBS has not affected the flags. Flags, whatever which was affected by SUBS instruction, still it is there as it is. That is why BPL refers to the flags which is affected by the previous to previous instruction. So you should use this technique whenever you use a flags as a conditional quotes. <clears throat> you should be very careful. When I say previous, it can be previous to previous also. If you have not affected the flags or changed the flags in the previous instruction. So when I say branch PL, continue. Then what will happen? At the end of this one, at the end of this, I finish my program. So you would have, have got in R1, in R3, the quotient, and <clears throat> you have got it. But when I finish this operation, one wrong thing has happened. Of course, I, I do not call it wrong because you would have lost the value. See, I started my program. I'm addable. Hello, I'm addable. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, so when I when I keep on do this program, the last time that is, see you you branch and plus, for example, how many times you perform 
So first nine minus three, you got six. I performed one finish. So next, what is that? Six minus three, six minus three equals three. You have finished this operation also. Then you got for what? Three minus three <coughs> equals zero. Then also you finished. Look at the last operation. Three minus three is equal to zero. Zero is positive or not? It's a positive. So it's a branch and plus. That means that even though in the last operation you have finished everything, again you are branching one more time in certain cases because why? You have subtracted three minus three zero. So zero is what still the positive number. You go back to here. Now what will happen here? You are the you are performing unwanted operation. What is the unwanted operation? Zero minus three. So you are going to get what? Minus three. That means that <coughs> the number you are not adding. Of course you are not adding. So. Uh, because in the last operation, whatever the extra operation you perform, zero minus three, answer is negative. That why, that's why this instruction will not work. So my R three quotient will be perfect. But what I am losing, the register in R one, the register R one, uh, which I am using, which I am using to subtract, it becomes what minus three. So if you don't want minus three, you want to remind, you want R one to be remind as zero because wherever it stopped, you want to stop at this place only. So what you have to do? You can add to the R one back R two. So when you can do it, so whenever in the last time, that is, a, it's, a, it's called as a <coughs> minus. So what you can do is in the last case, because you have subtracted extra, so you can always take that in, that instruction. You can always put it. So why I'm doing this one? Because to get actual reminder which was there after the subtraction. So if you don't do this one, what will happen? R one will be minus three will be there. So it's not required to do it. So if you want to make actual reminder, what is that? That is after the subtraction, it should be zero. If you want to make it. Add R2 back to the R1 because why you have to do it because you have subtracted one extra time than required. So otherwise this is not required. Then you can keep your answer in the register. So where is your <coughs> reminder now? The reminder will be in the R1. Quotient will be in the R3. To see the actual reminder, so you have to add it back. If I am not interested in the reminder, I am interested in only quotient. This instruction is not required. So you can you can store this number in the memory also. So. <coughs> So in this case, since I've kept in the registers, I will observe the two registers. So now I'll compile my program. <coughs> now, one error is there. We will see that what is an error. Unexpected operand is a BPL. Okay, this is. So now I'll compile my program. <coughs> now. Uh, this will keep on happening. So one or two instructions I'll run like that. Uh, so I'll subtract. If you subtract, see that R1, which contains a nine, you can keep observing. R1 becomes nine. Since you're able to subtract, R3 becomes what? R3 becomes one. So I'll do second time. So it becomes three. R3 becomes two times you subtracted. Again, if I continue, R R1 becomes zero, but R3 becomes zero. My R3 becomes three. This is my actual quotient. <clears throat> but it again executes one more time, which is not required because the loop is like that. And so in such case, what will happen? R1 will be a different value because the moment you subtract, you will get a minus three. That is a two's complement. So I want to, uh, it stops here. I want to get the back R1. So I got the R1 back. Now, so at the end of this program, this is my answer. R3 contains the quotient. That is three. R1 contains the reminder. This is my answer. So this is what the expectation. So R3 will be the quotient. R4 will be the reminder. You can move the reminder into R4. Actually, I given R4. Automatically, it will be there in the uh, R1. OK, you can just instruct this. I can just say R1 is a point. So this is how the, the program performing the division of two numbers. So you can call the whole of this program as a procedure. You can write as a procedure. You can use this number in another program development. So now we have understood that how to perform the division of two numbers. Now we'll go to the next program. So next program is more interesting program. We will combine the two programs, whatever we developed earlier and use the procedure concepts and we'll understand how the procedures are implemented. So now what I'm doing program to compute average of n 32 bit number program to compute average of n 32 bit numbers. <clears throat> now, what I'll do is whatever the program I have developed for uh, the sum of n 32 bit number, I will take it as it is. So I will take the sum of n 32 bit numbers, whatever we have taken, I have written earlier. I just take it. 
so this is my sum of n 32 bit numbers the whatever we have written earlier only thing is here i have written a program such that when the carry generates i will accumulate in the carry so now i will make an assumption that my answer is always n 32 bit number so answer the, so i'll make an assumption assumption is what is assumption so answer is 32 bit number so answer is 32 bit number i'll make an assumption to make the program simple so what i'll do i'll remove the carry updation which is which is required so i will remove that carry updation so now <clears throat> now this is a program so what is the program at the 4000 instead of 4000 what i'll do i'll keep the numbers in the uh, i'll keep the numbers here so that it, it looks better to do this operations so i'll store the numbers here so nums d c d let's say 9 so 5 10 6 like that so 3 comma 3 and then 3 let's say i've given some numbers so so 16 plus 14 there's a 30 30 average is 5 is my average now what i am doing here so i'll replace this by the nums now at the end of this program if i run it i am loading the numbers this is the loop what we have implemented for adding the set of numbers and when i finish my loop that means that i finish my loop if i come here i'll be having in the register so that is whatever the register r2 register i'll be having the the sum so at the end of this program i'll be having the r2 register the sum of all these numbers in this case 30 so we'll just check only that portion first to start with is already we have done it anyway, just. so i'll compile this program so i will run this program at a single shot and stop it now at the end of this program so r2 contains one e see one e one e means what 30 that means that sum of all these numbers that is 30 which is an hexadecimal format one e will be there at the end of this program now i want to write <coughs> a program for division program for division so this program is for what for addition of n 32 bit number now i want to perform a division so now what i'll do is instead of writing the whole of my division program here i will call the procedure called division so now how do we write uh, division uh, procedures whenever you want to write a procedure that means that you have to write the procedure as a separate code where do you write that separate code you cannot mix that code somewhere in this program because this pro this program is one entity it should run independently so whenever you require some other procedure or don't mix the procedure here now once stop b stop is over that means that the the main program is over the fundamental the main program which which serves the application is completed now come here anyway the place after the b stop never executes automatically only if you are interested you should invoke to that place and come back so that writing any code below the b it will not automatically execute so that is the best place to write your procedures how do we write a procedures any procedure as we know that there is a name for a procedure will be there in c also and there is a <coughs> one procedure is there so you have passing this procedure certain inputs and you are passing to this procedure certain outputs in the sense procedure return certain outputs then what will be the last statement of a procedure so what is the last statement of a procedure and how do you invoke a uh, procedure now these are the two things we learn first of all procedures will be having a name and every procedure when you call it you pass certain inputs I mean the procedure completes your your accessing certain outputs whereas in a C it's very easy because when you write a function so <clears throat> what we do when you write a function there's a name for a function will be there let's say so written type will be there it's a written uh, written let's say I'll take an integer integer so function some arguments will be there yes or no so a comma b like this so that means that there is a name will be there for a procedure certain inputs will be there as an argument and there is a what is called one written type will be there here the whole of this function or procedure you have to implement yourself when i say implement yourself what is the support provided in assembly language the support provided in assembly language is only one thing is how do you call a function or a procedure whose name you know that that means that instructions are provided only to invoke a procedure all remaining things that means that passing the arguments returning that yes or no and return back to the place where you called all you have to implement it 
in a main line in a, in a normal language like a high level languages these are all taken care by the the code will be generated by your compilers so you just say function and implement all your code here so return is not your concern because why compiler puts that code return is not your taking care passing arguments you are not taking care you know that these are the values through stack or something whatever the maybe method it will be available to you here in the program like a dummy variables are created for you so it is all you have to do it what are the things you have to do it return type i have to manage the arguments what i am pass i have to manage am i passing the arguments through registers am i passing the arguments through a memory locations am i passing the arguments through as a pointers you have to take a decision or am i passing arguments through a stack <clears throat> all low level whatever you are going to uh, understand when you design a compilers you you can understand in the low level language because why it is not so easy to pass an arguments to access them and everything you should understand what are the methods available to pass my arguments like okay, there are four methods are there to pass an arguments into a function you can use a registers you can use a memory locations you can use a pointer to memory locations you can use the stack these are the four methods available to pass an arguments into a function then how do you return it return is also you can you can perform in two to three types so like the same four types also you can use you can return through a register you can return through a memory location which should be understood by both the main program and the, the so procedure this is a place where i put my answer you read from that there should be an understanding between the main program and a function then you can put in a memory or you can pass a pointer so that pointer will be used in the main program to access your answer back or you can pass through a stack also so that mean that there are four ways you can able to push the data into a function and also return to the function through the registers through the memory location through the pointers and through the stack these are the four methods available and all these you should take a decision when you write a program assembly language program so now since it's a very simple uh, very basic programs are there in your syllabus we will focus on how to pass the information through a registers how to read also through a registers so in next program probably in the factorial or something we will see that how to pass the through a memory pointer also here i'll assume that i am passing the argument to register returning the answer is also through a register <coughs> now thus what is the support provided by assembly language the support provided to implement the function is only they provided one support what does that support they provided so they provide it what is called as two instruction one is called as uh, the only one instruction called bl and then i can use a move instruction both so using these two instruction a set of these two instruction i can implement the functions now we have studied what is called b so we have studied what is called b we studied and also we have studied what is called equality also branch and equal so now i am studying there is another third type of branching instruction called as bl so what is the requirement of a bl where is the necessity of a separate instruction why i cannot use a branch we have seen that <coughs> look at here am i audible yes sir yes sir okay yes, sir. If, okay if i if you look at this instruction what does it does you branch to a particular place and you continue program why can't i use simple b or b any instruction in a procedures because there's a normal branching and a procedure there's a one difference is there in a normal branching you branch that's all so then the program always continues from the place where you branch in procedure is not like that when i branch to division i should execute all my code here and should able to return back to the main program that mean that concept of return is there in a procedure where is a normal branch or a normal conditional branch there is no question of return back so that is where we require a separate branch instruction which is not similar to b or which is not similar to b on condition instruction so what is the instruction they are provided they are provided what's called bl instruction how bl is different from b and b on condition in case of a branch instruction it knows that when you use this instruction you are invoking a procedure so assembler knows that assembler in the sense the arm the core the microprocessor or microcontroller knows that oh when you use a bl there is a necessity for you to come back to come back to where the place next to the bl instruction so since you are calling the bl instruction since the microprocessor knows that there is a way you have to come back now it's a responsibility of a core the microprocessor to store the address of the next instruction in somewhere so question comes somewhere somewhere means what normally in a high level language we think that the written instruction will be stored in the stack i said when we explain the arm architecture there is always there is a place inside the core where you can store the written address so that what will happen you need not come out of the core and fetch the written address from the memory so to make it faster they have provided one register called link register we have studied now in this architecture the purpose of a link register now we will be understanding through this uh, implementation of a procedures so what the bl will do it 
BL will do it. The job of a branch instruction that means it will branch to the label whatever you specify. That is a procedure name in this case, and also it does one extra job called as store the address of the next instruction. That means the contents of a program counter into a link register. So if somebody says, what is the difference between a branch instruction and a BL instruction? You have to there are two things are there. In case of branch, you are just only branching. You are not coming back. In case of BL, you are branching to a place similar to the branch instruction. Also, address of the next instruction, which is there in a program counter, will be copied into the link register and placed. So that will be easy for me. May I can able to come back. Then how do you come back? Generally, in most of the microprocessors given by the Intel processor, the user return instruction called return RET will be provided. So RET or RETI or RET <coughs> F, these are the instructions generally provided in almost all microcontrollers. If you take 8051, you can take Intel processor. These are return instructions very common. When does the return is used? Return is used in the web procedure to return back to the, the place where you left your program when you invoke a procedure. But here they have they they have not wasted even a single instruction uh, extra instruction also though no return is provided they are provided only move so i have to use move instruction to come back to what the place wherever i have left why they have provided a move itself because we know that where is the return address is there in the link register where should i go back go back to the place who who takes us to the place wherever we want program counter whatever you put into the program counter that is the place you go since my my place of return is there in the link register. I'll copy the link register to program counter. So that means that the last instruction of any procedure. So any procedure is nothing but what move PC to a link register. LR, that's all. What does it? It is equivalent to return. What does it do? The link register which contains a return address will be copied into the program counter. So whenever you load any new address in the program counter, what will happen? Program immediately go back to the what? The place wherever you call this procedure. Now, where do I call this procedure? I'll be calling here the procedure. <clears throat> you know, this is where I finish my uh, summing of all the n five numbers, n uh, five thirty bit numbers. This is a place where I want to call. So I'll say bl. How do you call bl? How do you call with the name of a procedure? This is where this is an example how you can implement a procedure. So procedures will be called by using a bl instruction followed by the name of a procedure. Procedures are implemented with a name first, and then. So you can write in a comments what are the inputs and outputs so that others can understand. Then the last instruction of a procedure is what move PC comma LR. This is this makes it the program go back to the the place where after the BL instruction whatever there that is a B instruction in this case. So BL so does the two jobs it branches to the div and the address of the next instruction in this case what is the address of the, this instruction address of this instruction which is there in the program counter is placed in the LR register. So this how the implementation of a Procedures are possible in a ARM language. So these are common questions you can expect in the exam also. What is the difference between B and BL? How procedures are implemented? What is the job? What is the meaning of move PC comma LR instruction? Yes or no? So like this, you can able to <coughs> comprehend the meaning of all these registers, meaning of these instructions. Now we will go to the implementation. Now, so whenever I use a div instruction, whatever the division we performed in the previous operation, I will copy that uh, whatever the division we performed. But we will change the program. We will change the program to suitable for as a procedure. So I'll copy the so the program. So I will not store. I'll okay. Now, so whatever the division program I have written previously, I just taken it. Now, <clears throat> since inputs you are passing from the main program, so uh, I am not passing the inputs here. I'll remove this. I'll remove this one. Now why? Because in the previous program, we have run this program as independent program. Now, when I write as a procedure, who will pass the argument for this? You are passing from this program. We will assume that. So R1, what are the inputs we will assume? So R1 contains the uh, dividend because the, this program is like that. It is written with an R1. So we will assume that R2 is the uh, divisor. So that means that, let's say, this program, you can use this division program as a procedure now in any other program. So like that, we will write as a general division program. So this program expects R1 as a dividend, R2 as a divisor. You can see that I am subtracting continuously R2 from the R1 and incrementing the R3. So where is the quotient? So quotient, since I'm not interested in the reminder here, quotient is equal to what? In which register? R3. Quotient is in a R3 register. Even I don't require a reminder also here. Yes or no? <clears throat> if you want, you can use a reminder. Otherwise, it's not required. In this case, I am not used. So if at all, if required, you can write reminder is in which register R1. Or if you don't want to disturb the 
<coughs> R1 and R2 because when you call the program, we don't want to disturb the values of a dividend and a divisor. Then uh, keep in uh, so you can use uh, another register for keeping a reminder. So I can put back the value of the dividend back to the the R1 register. That is also can do. In this case, I'll remove because I'm not interested in the reminder. Now, so what are the things I have to pass to this program? So I require to pass R1 as a dividend, R2 as a divisor. Now I'll come back to this program. Before you call any program, pass the arguments. What all you have to do? Pass the arguments. That is function arguments. Arguments to the arguments to the uh, procedure. What all the arguments I have to pass to this procedure? So we know that this procedure input is what R1 dividend. Now, where is the my total sum of the previous answer? It is in which register? It is there in the. Uh, <clears throat> you can look at that R2 register. My total answer in the previous program, addition of a set of n numbers, what was used register? It was there in the. R2 register. You can see that we are adding continuously all the numbers. It is there in a R2 register. So now what I'll do is, so I will pass, which is there in R2. Previous answer is in R2 register, but this program function expects in what is R1. So I'll pass R1 comma R2. So like this, you have to see that where is the answer in the previous logic, and your procedure expects in which register you have to pass the arguments. So that you have to match it. So one argument I've done it. <clears throat> now, how many numbers are there in this case? So this is a program to perform uh, uh, what is called as average of five numbers. So since average of five numbers is there, so which I'm just taking in this case is a fixed five. So in this function expects the divisor in R2 register. So before calling this program, I put R2 hash five, hash five and put it. So now <clears throat> I, all the input arguments, which is supposed to pass inside the function, I have stored in a registers. It is like this. These values I have stored in a two registers. So now, once I go inside the function, these two registers I'll be accessing inside the function. <coughs> now arguments I have passed it. Now I call the division program. Now how the division program will work? So I'm keeping an R3 as a zero. Each time I subtract, I'm incrementing the R3 by one. So once I finish my program, so I will have my answer here. That is, I finished my program here. My answer will be in R3. Since the answer is already in R3, and you are also told to the main program answer is in R3, you don't require anything. Just call the return program. So they just say return from a procedure. So return, return from the procedure. So the main program knows that. So you are you are uh, passing the answer in a R3 register. So now I completed all the logic for the procedure implementation. Now I have an answer here. Where is an answer? Answer is in a <coughs> quotient. Answer, uh, sorry, answer is in R3 register. I can just move that answer into memory location. LD0 R0 uh, equals 0x. So 400. So store R3. So comma R0. So my answer is stored here. Now, if I run my program here, what is the answer I supposed to get? So I supposed to get addition of these five numbers divided by five. That means that 30 is an answer divided by five is what? Uh, <coughs> six. Six is my answer is uh, for this program. So before I run, look at this program. It's a division procedure. So I call the division by the name. I return out to return from a procedure. So I'm returning my answer in a R3. So that I've documented here. What are the inputs and passing? What are the outputs? I call the program by BR division. Then I'm storing my answer. So I'll compile my program. <coughs> so there are some errors are there. We will just see before that itself what are the errors are there. So return. This is my end of the program is here. So division is here. Okay. Uh, stop B stop is here. Okay. Okay, these are all I have to make it. I'll remove this or I'll make it comment. I'll remove these things. Okay. Okay, now again I'll compile. So there's one error is there. I just go to that multiply define symbol continue. See, it's always is important to know you get this error. See, in the main program here, I've used label called COMT. In the same program, I use another label called again COMT. When you use like that, assembler gets confused. Whether you want to branch to this continue or this continue, that is why you have to change the labels. Same labels you don't use. I'll say one, and this is one I specified. Again, compile. 
so there is no error so there one there's one warning is that we will see that later that means he says that instead of using uh, mu pc comma uh, lr you use bx there is another instruction is available that he says that okay let's not worry about that now hmm? so now i have implemented all my program it's compiled now i'll execute my program so only at the time of branching what will happen we will observe that now the program will execute for five times i'll run in a single step so by the time program finishes so now okay it is finished so now which register r1 should contain the answer look at r1 r1 contains money money is nothing but 30 now what is the value in r2 r2 should be 5 so this you have to check it if the program is not working so before calling the bl you just verify the register is supposed to carry the argument should contain the proper values now both are containing the proper values now i'm calling it when i call look at the link register now what is the link register some zero zero is there now when i execute it the the next instruction whatever the bl division whatever the number of bytes required for that the next address of this instruction whatever it contains should be stored in a link register now we'll execute bl instruction see that when i say bl instruction what will happen it will branch to here don't use this this symbol here look at that step over is there step over means single shot it'll execute it if i want to verify whether the procedure is working properly or something like that don't use step over you can use step into that to, un to analyze i'll say step so step over is there step into is there if you want to skip the whole code you execute one shot you use a step over otherwise step into now i'll say step into now see that i have jumped into division when i say bl look at the link register link register contains a 34 so 34 is the address of the next instruction after the bl so after the bl the next address was 34 that is stored in a link register now where is a program counter program counter changed to the division now we execute this program <coughs> now how many times you have to divide so six times i think you would have to divide that so i'll execute that instruction so each time it's a division and r3 is getting incremented if you look at the r3 so it's getting incremented and now the last time okay now it's finished what's the value of r3 six is an average now you have to return back now i look keep looking at this instruction now move pclr move pclr means what what is the value in lr is 34 should be copied to the uh, copy to the pc that means that my cursor should go back to where here now it has to go back to this instruction here so observe that properly now what will happen to uh, lr to pc lr is copied to what pc just observe that now see that lr has been copied to what the pc when i say move pc comma lr now where is the control control has come back to what ldr instruction now i'll be storing the answer here you can look at the memory location what is my answer so answer is six so this is how you got an answer for this program six is an average uh, obtained after addition of these five numbers so this is how you can able to implement procedures in a assembly language programming so we have learned here instruction called bl <coughs> we have also learned how to implement a return instruction in a procedure we also learned how to pass an argument to the register, how to return the argument to a register. Now, for a one minute, just look at this program before we proceed to the next one. So, this is the program we have written now. Now, so once you understood this one, <coughs> now we will go to uh, other program, which is very useful program. So which is nothing but finding out the smallest or the largest of signed and unsigned numbers. So since you already know the logics of that program in the sense you're implemented in the high level language. So only the basics, what is required for that, I'll explain here in the program. <coughs> Now, so what is an algorithm to do that one in this case? So look at the algorithm, what we are going to use it. So you are going to find out the smallest or the largest of n numbers. So what is the thing about to do? Initialize the first element as a smallest element. So, and the number of elements n. So I'll be using R4 register, R1 register to hold the smallest element. I'll use R4 element number of elements since already i have assumed the first element as a smallest element how many elements is remind n minus one elements will be remind so i will just take that and n minus one i'll put into r4 now <clears throat> i will once i have got the first element what i'll do i'll implement the loop since we already know that loop through all the 
n elements which is there where n elements is there in r r4 uh, the remaining elements so every time i loop through every new element if the element is smaller than the smallest element then i'll update my smallest element i'll update the smallest that is i'll replace the r1 with a new element so once you got the answer i store the answer in a ram this is the logic required for this the program so now so once i have understood the logic for this program we will start implementing the program so no so what i'll do is for i will assume the elements are stored in the the memory stored in the memory i'll assume so in this case i'll assume it's available in the uh, code memory i'll assume in the code memory so i will implement one more directive i'll be implementing here that is called as eq directive so we will understand what is eq <clears throat> now what is the logic requires for this program so my numbers the smallest number i supposed to find out so should be stored in where in the memory code memory so all the numbers i'm storing in a code memory now the logic says that first so get the the first element that is which is there in which location pointed by r0 into r1 so the r1 will get the first element i am assuming that r1 contains the smallest element this is what the initialization required and now i have to load into the r4 how many times you have to loop it that is initialization r4 contains n minus 1 <coughs> n minus 1 instead of 5 uh, minus let's say in this case 5 is there i could have used instead of 5 i can say minus 1 also so n minus 1 this i'll explain later so i'll replace this one now n minus 1 is nothing but what so it's nothing but what 5 minus 1 four elements now assume that i have got a five elements are there so one i have taken as a smallest element of four now so here i have used another concept of loading the data from a memory location see ldr r0 usually i used to write inside the hash 4 when you do it inside the hash 4 that is what is the meaning it carries is what so you are going to fetch the data from a memory location pointed by what r0 plus 4 that is the meaning of that address so when a, there is another method is there that mean that i am not writing the 4 inside but i say comma and then hash 4 i'll write next to that so what is the meaning of that so whenever you use this type of addressing in the load instruction it will fetch the data from a memory location pointed by r0 but after fetching the pointer is automatically incremented by 4 you need not do the add r0 comma 04 in all your previous program you could have done this one so now <coughs> we are learning this method so what is this will do it it will fetch the contents of a memory pointed by r0 in this case nums the first number into r1 after fetching the data increment the pointer automatically without using the add instruction so how much you would increment four that you write it like so this is the advantage so you can reduce one more instruction this is what i have introduced here now so we will finish eq also now here instead of four for example i have written a program for five element that is why you are coded here let's say tomorrow i want to increase for 10 numbers so you have to search in the program you have to find out where is the number is there that you have to replace if there is a 10 element you have to write nine that means that you should understand the program you should go to the place wherever you have written a number there you have to replace it's difficult for a for you to comprehend this program after few days yes or no so that is why we generally use what is called constants hash define symbols we use it like in c we used hash define symbols so <clears throat> how do you use a hash define symbol hash define symbol can be used using a similar directive called eq so how do you define eq eq use equating a number to a name or you can also say eq is an a directive to name the constants what is eq eq is a directive to name the constants now what is the name of this constant 5 n is a given it here so wherever i use i refer n in the whole of this program it will be replaced by what it will be replaced by the 5 automatically now tomorrow i don't want this program to do for uh, for four five elements i just say what can it's easy to comprehend the program when you put a define statement like this in the beginning of a program instead of making like this now what i have to do here so here i have to say what n minus 1 so i'll say n so minus so n minus 1 so hash error error so don't think that this n minus 1 happens at the run time no 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 it's assembly time assembler knows the value of what is the n it subtracts minus 1 and put the 8 9 here it's equivalent to putting r4 hash 9 only at the time of assembly it's not the run time at the run time it's not the microcontroller is doing the subtraction it the assembler 
these are all the assembler operations so now i have learned another directive in this program called as eq directive eq is naming the constants so now many in the wherever i refer n it will be substituted by this value in this case since i have taken a five elements i given a five so now i have done initialization the first element i taken as the smallest element loaded the value of r4 how many times you have to loop it that is ready now to perform the operation what is the first operation compare the smallest element which is there in the r1 register so with the next element so since already the r0 which is automatically incremented to the by four bytes it's already pointing to the next number so what you have to do just get that number what is it you are doing get the next number second number into the r2 register which i want to compare with an r1 also automatic and also i place again zero for here say that again automatically it should increment to the next number when i refer the next time it should be r0 should point to the next number that is why i used here also zero four now compare so what are the two elements you are comparing r1 is the smallest element which you are comparing with r2 so whenever i compare these two elements correct now i can check whether r2 has the smallest element or not the last element so i said when you use a signed number unsigned numbers you can use what is called two conditional statements conditional quotes to implement your logic one is less than or equal other is what is a higher value hi so there are two things are there i can use ls or hi i can use ls means branch to the position called less if r1 is smaller than r2 how do you read it as i was telling many times first read the b b means what branch if r1 come back here less than r2 so if r1 is less than r2 less than or equal to r2 go to the less so when we have to do that if r1 is all if r1 itself is less than the new number we don't require to change the r1 value so that that is why i'm skipping to here so why i'll skip here because whatever the number you assume the first number itself is smallest so there is no meaning of changing the smallest number by chance if the branch condition does not satisfy that mean that r1 is bigger than the r2 in the sense you found a new element r2 which is smaller than the r1 now what you do put r2 the new smallest element into the r1 and then continue this program since i finished one operation now what you have to do it you should do it how many times you have to do it for r4 times that is n minus 1 times so subtract the r4 by 1 subtract r4 by 1 so whenever you subtract i said it is nothing but a compare instruction only but only thing you have to use what s s you have to use it when you say yes what will happen flag will be changed so when does a flag will change when this reaches to zero flag will change that zero flag will be set so it's an indication that i have to stop my program when the zero flag is not set r4 is not zero so that your your dne is going to valid instruction it's going to loop it so now this will loop it how many times n minus 1 times once you finish your program r1 contains the smallest element so that you store that number in a memory location 400 this is the the program so we use for the bls now so i will run this program so i have got a set of uh, five elements are stored here so i have for the number of elements is a five i stored it here r1 is a register used to keep the smallest element r4 m k is a loop counter so so i am the logic this is an operation logic i implemented store the answer in the 400 location so i will compile my program so i will run my program now since already you know that number of elements are there how many elements are there this one smallest element is how much 5 is the smallest element now if i run this 5 should get i'll run a single shot i'll run this single shot i'll put it so you got the 5 so now i'll change this program for four sets of combinations now so what are the combinations i'm going to change now now i want to find out the uh, largest of the n unsigned number this is the smallest of n unsigned numbers i want to find out the largest then what is the change required same program you can convert it so now instead of ls instead of ls i just put it condition i'll change it i'll put it high hi that's all i do it now again i'll compile now i change the program to compute the largest of n set of numbers instead instead of a uh smallest number now what is my answer see what is the largest number so 96 should be the largest number that should be come here so i'll run my program so then stop it see you got a 96 so i'll change the program to compute the largest number now now we will see some uh, very strange things <coughs> now i will include when i say numbers numbers can be signed also number can be unsigned see when you are reading from a sensors when you are getting certain data see there are so many things are there negative also for example temperature can be negative also temperature can be positive also you cannot say only positive so the real world requires both the signed numbers that is unsigned also signed also i will take some of them negative numbers now so what i'll do is 
So I'll take a simple number so that easy to for you to comprehend. Say minus one, I'll take it. So minus five, so I will take it. So 10, so there's a nine, let's say. So four and let's say zero. So how many numbers I've taken? I've taken a five numbers. And this, what is the largest is what? So here I'll take the, this I'll take it nine. Okay, this I'll take it eight. Now, now in this case, which is the largest for me? The largest should be what? Eight is the largest. So which is the smallest in this case? Minus nine. We will see that. Does it work or not? Now I find out for the, the program is for what? Largest I have written the program. So I change it back to uh, BLS. So now I want to find out the smallest of n sign numbers. So smallest is what? Minus nine as opposed to get it. We will see that whether will we get that number or not. Now, so I'll compile my program. So this is the my space. I'll run that and put it here. See, you got a zero, zero. That means that my answer is not correct. What is the smallest of the number, this set of number? Minus nine is a smallest number. Minus nine is two's complement of minus nine is supposed to get it. I have not got it because why? I cannot use the condition codes, whatever I've used to implement unsigned number for assigned numbers because LS and HI will refer to flags got called as a carry flag and zero flag because you're checking for less than or equal or greater than. <coughs> so LS and HI are used for what? Unsigned numbers. I want to get for signed numbers. Signed numbers means you look for what? Overflow flag and you would require a signed flag also you're looking for that. For that, what are the two codes available? So one is called as uh, you have uh, uh, two functions available, two functions available. So one is uh, less than LT will be used. One is GT uh, greater than greater than we'll be using or less than or equal LE can be used. So I can use LT less than or equal LT less than and LE is what less than or equal. So now I, what I'll change, I'll use either, I'll stop my code execution. So I'll be use here either LT I can use, LT means less than only. If less than or equal means LS, same condition means LE I've taken it. Now I'll compile my program. So I've just taken a condition code, which is for a signed numbers. So now I'll run my program now. Now I got F7, FFFF. -F -F. This is the two's complement of minus nine. You can take the calculator in you, in your system. Just type the minus nine, you get this number. So my answer is perfectly correct because why I have got the nine, which is nothing but minus nine two's complement of that. That is my answer is perfect. Now the last condition, if you want to find out the largest of these numbers. So, so what is that thing I have to use instead of BLE, BLE, I have to use a condition code, which is, which is meant for what? So greater than or equal I can use or GT greater than I can use it. So let's say I'll use GT. So BGT. So GT is what? Greater than symbol. So once I have this one, I'll compile my program. So the largest number in this case is what? Eight should be the correct answer as opposed to get it. So I'll compile my program and see that eight you got it. So this is how you can able to handle both the signed numbers and unsigned numbers when you're able to do it. So what are the condition codes we learned today? The, the two condition codes which are used for unsigned numbers we learned and two condition codes I can use for signed numbers also can be used it. So this is how we can implement. So uh, finding out a competition of the largest or smallest numbers. So using a signed number for signed numbers and unsigned numbers. So now, so I'll take your attendance. Uh, so if any doubts is there, by that time you can raise your doubts. Am I audible? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Today, the lab, which was the B3 lab is there. You have to do all these programs, 32 bit number additions, average. It is there in the lab programs. You can refer the notes. The lab programs are attached at the end. Or I probably I can uh, copy the lab manual also into your folder. So three programs of the lab, we have done it. There are six is there. Already we have finished one. 
So today you can do three, four. So there's another one more lab is sufficient for your assembly programs. Since unit two and three is also there in the for the quiz, unit two means not the theory embedded systems like that. The assembly language programming is completely is there for the your quiz. So since we have another two three classes there, I'll be covering the theory aspect of that. So this almost completes the programming aspect of my lecture series. So you can do the lab programs today. <clears throat> so keep reading all the instructions. What is there in the notes I have circulated to you in unit two and three. Uh, Jay Kishan. Present, sir. Uh, Jaden Seven Joy. Present, sir. Jinka Rakesh. Present, sir. Anirudh. Present, sir. Prasanna. Present, sir. Karthik Bharadwaj. Karthik. Uh, Ketan Kumar. Present, sir. Ketan Rishib. Purushottam. Present, sir. Here, Aurora. Present, sir. <laughs> Shishida Reddy. Present, sir. Uh, Likita. Present, sir. Kaushik, Kaushik Bain. Kaushik. Kritika Venkatesh. Kritika Venkatesh. So she's present. Yeah. Kshitich Shivatsava. Kshitich. Kumar Prakar. Present, sir. Lohi Vishnu. Present, no, yeah, Maharudra, I think he's not there. Mahendra. Present, sir. Mahesh Bhaskar Egde. Present, sir. Malavika. Manali. Malavika. Present, Ode. sir. Manali. Present, sir. Malavika is there. Malavika. No, okay. Uh, Mandira. Mandira M. Manish PSN. Present, sir. Mayank Agarwal. Present, sir. Uh, Mehem Vilotra. Present, Mahal. sir. Mohammed Mayin Irfan. Present, sir. Rafiq. Rafiq. Mohammed Rafiq. Zaid Sikandar. Present, sir. Naval Garia. Mudit Naval Garia. Present, sir. Muskan Agarwal. Present, sir. Aitri Naik. Present, sir. Karachandra. Present, sir. Raman Arya. Present, sir. Amiya LG. Present, sir. Navneet Bharadwaj. Present, sir. Nitan Shutyagi. Vidhi. Present, sir. Vicky Vishwanath Egadi. Yes, sir. Vicky Ramsi. Present, sir. Vishal DV. Present, sir. Nishil Rajan. Present, sir. Nitish Egade. Present, sir. Nitish Kumar Tiwari. Present, sir. Nitin Kumar Rajesh. Present, sir. Omkar Vyas. Om Prakash. Om Prakash. Om Prakash, present, sir. Yeah. Count in here. Present, sir. Leila Charan. Yeah, is there. Palaksha. Pooja Rajesh. Present, sir. Present, sir. Past present, sir. Yeah, yeah. Pradeep TM. Present, sir. Present, sir. Rajwal. Present, sir. Pranav Ariharan. Present, sir. Pranita Imadishetti. Present, sir. Pranita. Pranit. Present, sir. Priya Naik. Present, sir. Priyan Kumari. Present, sir. Priyan Singh. Present, sir. Purno Dio Rajankar. Present, sir. Sharad Chandra. Present, sir. Rachid Vivedi. Present, sir. Ragunandan Venugopal. Present, sir. Raghvi Gupta. Present, sir. Ravant K. Present, sir. Satvi Gauda. Present, sir. sir Rena uh, Shekhar. Present, sir. Yeah. Heli Satvi Gauda. Sir, uh, sir, uh, Karthik present, sir, 069. My hmm. mic has a problem, sir. I spoke, okay. but you couldn't be able to hear. Karthik is present. Correct, yes, sir. Oh. 069. Sir, uh, Malika yeah. also present. I got disconnected, yeah. sir. Yeah, okay. Uh, Shabazz Ahmad. Shabazz Ahmad. Ahmad. 
ओके किशोर मनोहर किशोर मनोहर कोमल या कोमल कोमल महंतेश कमटे प्रेजेंट सर मंजुला प्रेजेंट सर निसर्ग प्रेजेंट सर कुशला प्रेजेंट सर ओके ओके